Welcome to Upfront on the Voice of America. My name is Jackson Vunganya. Now, Belgium has long struggled to deal with the colonial past that so millions of Africans in its former colonies, like the DR Congo, like in Rwanda. Many people in these countries died from disease, from starvation, and violence. Uh, Belgium's King Leopold II ruled the Congo Free State, pillaging the region of its natural resources and overseeing the death of what is estimated to be over 15 million Congolese. Now, the country's Museum of Africa, which has been described as a monument to the worst excesses of colonial plunder, housing a human zoo, the beheaded skulls of vanquished tribal chiefs, and thousands of stolen historical artifacts from former colonies. The museum is reopening for the first time in five years after undergoing a five-year, $73 million renovation and what they're calling a decolonization project. Henry Ridgewell reports from Brussels. The museum opened in 1910 as a showcase for empire of Belgian might and colonial riches. Just over a century later, museum curators have attempted a complete reversal. Our aim was to make a museum of contemporary Africa on the Africa of today, but at the same time to also bring a very critical look on the colonial past of uh, Belgium. We recognize now uh, the, the, the many victims of uh, colonization, the African victims of colonization. Uh, we recognize too that, that there were a lot of the racist attitudes that were developed at that time have their consequences today. Artifacts have been given new captions explaining their provenance and displayed alongside modern African art. Videos offer African perspectives on culture, colonialism and climate change. Not everything can be recast. Built into the walls are statues of Africans gazing adoringly at their white masters, with titles like Belgium brings well-being to Congo. The grounds once housed a human zoo of over 250 Congolese. Seven died from exposure to the cold after being forced to wear traditional dress. King Leopold II commissioned the museum to generate investment for mining and rubber production in the colonies. To some, his name is synonymous with the brutality of empire. These statues showing Africans as primitive or savage used to be on display across the museum. Now they have been gathered together in a basement room, an effort to show that attitudes have changed, but that this history must be remembered. But some say the museum hasn't gone far enough. When the museum is not presented as a museum of colonization, but instead as a museum of Africa, that really confuses the issue. Honestly, we need to make a real museum of colonization. We need to deal with our colonial history. It really is something that's missing in Belgium. Then there's the question of where these treasures belong. Hundreds of thousands were looted. Well, certainly it's not normal that 80% uh, of African art is in European museums or in European private collections. So we have to make sure that they can get much greater access to our collections. Congo at the moment lacks capacity to deal with a lot of that heritage. Among those attending the opening was the director of Congo's museums. He insists any artifact returned to his country would be secure. The issue of security is not a real problem. It's a pretext for not giving back the objects. The revamp of this famous institution has forced Belgium to confront its colonial past. Those behind the project say this is one more step on the long road to reconciliation. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News at the Museum of Africa, Brussels.